Today we're talking about Mike Rose, I Just Want to Be Average, and it's a great article. I really enjoy it. There's a lot of vocabulary in this article that might be confusing to you, but some of it we can just discount. We don't have to understand every word, and honestly, we're not going to be able to. But some of the important vocabulary around important ideas we do have to understand. And one of these words is euphemism. Euphemism is a very important word, and it's an important word in this context around vocational, which is an important concept in this article. So look on page one, in the second body paragraph where the sentence says it's sentence number one two the sentence starts with the other rose apparently didn't do very well for i was placed in the vocational tract a euphemism for bottom level so what does euphemism mean First of all, what part of speech is euphemism, and how can we figure that out? If we look in the sentence, we can look and see it's clearly a noun. And how do we know it's a noun? Well, it has the article A, so that tells me a noun. Also, it ends an ism, which tells me a noun. So if we're going to take the time to learn this word, let's learn this word. That way we can use it in our own vocabulary, in our own writing, in our own speech. It's a great word. So euphemism, what it is, it's a word used in place of another word. It's a softer word, a less harsh word, a word that we use when we're trying not to be as blunt or as harsh. So, for example, I lost a lot of weight. In 2017, I weighed 175 pounds, and today I weigh 135 pounds, which is exciting. I've lost, how many pounds is that, 135, I've lost 40 pounds in a year and a half, which is very exciting. I've been working very hard and trying to lose weight and trying to be more healthy and eat better. So 40 pounds, that's exciting. But nobody would look at me and say, oh, Professor Undertree, you're fat. That would be rude, right? To look at someone and say you're fat. Now being fat isn't bad or good. It would just be rude to call somebody fat. So it's the word itself and the and kind of insulting. So rather than saying to someone, oh, you're fat, which wouldn't be very nice, you might instead have a euphemism for fat. And you might say, for example, you're chunky. So when I talked about myself at 175 pounds, I didn't say that I was fat. I said I was chunky, and I'm still chunky. I'm still fat, but I don't say I'm fat. I say I'm chunky, or I have a good friend, and he's trying to lose weight because he works a lot, and he's a student, and he doesn't have time. So when we take pictures together, he always texts me, and he says, I'm fat. And I'm never going to say to him, dude, you are so fat, because that would be rude, right? You don't say that. So instead, I say, because he's a guy, I say, you're large-ish. And then I do a smiley face. So large-ish is kind of a euphemism, right? It's a way to soften rather than being harsh. So euphemism can have a negative connotation. It can be negative in that we're trying to, you know, make it where we don't want to say it, but it can also be positive. The whole point of a euphemism is when we're trying to, instead of being blunt or instead of being harsh, we're trying to be milder. We're trying to be softer. So here, in this sentence, he says the vocational tract, a euphemism for bottom level. So what he's saying is vocational tract is the fat of my example and bottom level, no, that's backwards. I always do this backwards. Bottom level is the fat, and vocational tract is the, well, let me see. Vocational tract is the euphemism, 
vocational track, a euphemism. Yeah, vocational track is a euphemism. So this would be chunky, or this would be large-ish, and this is the fat. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so this is the negative or the harsh, and this is what we're saying in place of it. We're being milder, okay? So this is the euphemism. That's what he's saying here in this sentence. Now, what does that mean? Well, what is a vocational track? So to understand that, we have to understand vocational. Now, a lot of students, when they read this vocational track, they get confused because what they see is they see vacation. And vacation, vacation is fun. Vacation is what we did on spring break. This is not what vocation is. Vocation has two meanings if you look it up in the dictionary. One of them is like a calling, like a career calling, like if you're a priest or a minister, then you have a vocation. Some people think teaching, for example, is a vocation. It's a calling. It's also kind of a trade. So a vocation can be a career or a trade. Now, I am not saying that a vocation is bad, just like I'm not saying that fat is bad. I mean, obviously, I'm chunky. I am okay with being chunky. And having vocations are good, too. He's not saying it's bad, either. So don't get confused as you read this article. What he's saying is that some people are saying that it's, it's just a negative thing, not that the vocation is a negative thing, but that it's being used in a bad way, okay? So a trade is different than a, um, it's kind of blue collar, white collar. So when we think of this, this is another um, idea that you should know. Blue collar and white collar. Blue collar, and we have collar. Blue collar and white collar job. White collar job are like business jobs. They're like bank jobs. They'd be like a lawyer maybe, or a doctor, right? Or a Wall Street trader. Blue collar jobs, if you think about it, a white collar job is because you're wearing a white suit. Now, obviously we don't all wear white suits. I'm obviously not in a white suit. And I'm not a man anyway, so I'm not wearing a suit with a tie. But it used to be a white collar job is because men were the ones that worked in their white little shirts with their white with their ties. But now this is over the white collar. So blue collar, this would be the working man with his work shirt, right? His blue shirt. So this is going to be more your industry jobs, right? Or your trade jobs like your restaurant jobs, your manufacturing jobs. This is what your blue collar jobs are going to be. So when we're talking about trade jobs, we're thinking about this. We're also thinking about things like mechanics and um, what are other kinds of things? Uh, airport, I mean, uh, plane mechanics and um, hairdressers and any kind of trade job that you would nurses might even be considered a trade job so it's not good or bad they're just a different kind of thing if you get a certificate perhaps you would have a vocation so the problem though is you don't necessarily have to have a four-year degree it's a different kind of thing okay so in this particular situation, it's important because what he's arguing is not that it's bad, but that they were placed and then the education isn't good. So this is what we're talking about for vocation and euphemism. So you have to understand that when you start looking at the teachers. Because when he's talking about the teachers, and this whole part of this section of this article is talking about the bad teaching and how the teaching in this particular situation did not help for these trades, for these students, this is the point. Okay, so euphemism and vocation. Then we have to move on to pejorative, and pejorative is, when we turn the page, on page two, pejorative is what Brother Dill, Brother Dill does. And pejorative is not an actual word in the text, but you need to understand this word, which is why I give it to you. So let's go ahead and learn this word. 
pejorative. It's P-E-R-J-O-R-A-T-I-V-E, -E, pejorative. It's, uh, it's a very important word. A pejorative is an insult or a critical or negative word. Pejoratives are not words that we want to do. They're not used in polite company, okay? Now, friends often use pejoratives back and forth. Pejoratives are often biased. They're often racist. They're always negative. Okay, always negative. The N word, which I'm not going to say, is the biggest pejorative that we have currently in English, and you never ever want to say the N word in polite company or any company. It's very, very, very offensive. It's a form of pejorative. It's kind of a form of profanity. So you have to be very, very careful with profanity. Okay? Very careful with pejoratives. So here on page, top of page two, where we have this um, word, and he said, Salisbury Tudor says, no, sir, and it says, WAP. Be very careful with that because this is an Italian equivalent of the N word. Now, you probably don't know this because, one, we don't have a lot of Italians running around Orange County, although we do. You might just not know it. But we have to be careful when we read this, and this isn't necessarily that you're going to want to be using in your text as well. So, this is why I bring it up for you. If you're running across something like this, notice how it's in italicis. They're trying to give us a clue. This is a cultural slang. It's a cultural insult. We have a lot of these. So you always have to be very, very careful when you run across this. Within a culture, oftentimes, we insult each other and it's okay. So, for example, if you get a bunch of African Americans together, they can call each other the N-word to each other and not take offense and it's okay. But I can never and that's okay. Italians sometimes get together and call each other slang. We have slang for Latinos. We have slang for um, Chinese. I'm sure we have slang for Persians. I'm sure every single culture has its own pejoratives. And within the culture, maybe they use them, but outside the culture, we just simply don't call each other these names. Okay? So pejoratives, you just don't even want to touch these. Be really, really careful with these. So I wouldn't even touch that in this article, but you need to understand what it is, okay? So Brother Dill, here on page one, where he's calling his student this pejorative, it's really bad. That's what I need you to understand. This instructor, when he's calling his um, student, he's really insulting his student. It's really bad. That's why you need to understand what he's doing here. All right? And then the other thing, that another really important vocabulary word is on, also on page two in the next paragraph, we have miscellany, which is basically like miscellaneous, and it just means mix. So these are the important vocabulary words. Now let's take a look at the characteristics of the teachers and what he's talking about and why they matter. Hey everybody, so that was Mike Rose, I Just Want to Be Average, and it was for my class. If you liked it, leave a like. I'm new with this whole YouTube thing, 
This is a new setup. Lighting is really hard and I'm really not good at it, but I'm trying really hard. I am trying to get a hundred subscribers to my channel so that I can get a custom URL so it's a little bit easier to have it on my cards. So if you want, subscribe to my channel. I plan to have a lot more video lectures on um, classroom kind of things and I have a lot of upcoming really exciting things. So if you liked it, leave a like and if you enjoyed it, subscribe so you can watch all my videos. Have a great day!